<laughs> hey there, it's Ray here from Life Solutions, the ethical digital marketing firm helping small business grow in a sustainable and data-led way. And I am excited to be on the Prosperity Show uh, to share my personal story and how my business came to life, but also to give you inspiration in terms of how you can grow your business as well and also consider the environment at the same time. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, where we explore the journeys and insights of exceptional individuals who have achieved success in the digital marketing world. I'm your host, Prosper Tarovinga, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Ray Pastors, the founder of Life Solutions and Ethical Digital Marketing Firm. Now, Ray, how are you doing today? Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, a bit sore from a half marathon on the weekend, but you know, it's all part of the fun, part of the challenge. Fantastic. I like the name of your business. It's all part of life. So, you know, given that you're here today, you know, we're just going to dive into a bit of your story and what it is that you, um, you know, been up to. But for those that are at home, let me just catch you up to speed. Now, Ray's passion for making a difference started at a very young age where he used to st sell stickers to save koalas. Now, today his company is not only helping small businesses grow online in a sustainable and data-led way, but he also places sustainability at the core of his operations. Now, he also has a focus on removing jargon and simplifying matrix because a lot of us um, really find it difficult to connect with what's actually happening online, just simply predicated on the jargon and also marketers that are just pulling wool over our eyes. And Ray and his team want to empower small businesses to leverage the power of data and success. Now, if you hear Ray's journey, it is a true testament, you know, that his resilience and adaptability um, and also having overcome personal and financial challenges while he was pursuing his entrepreneurial dreams have made him the person he is today. So I invite you to join us as we delve into Ray's experiences. And I'm going to shut up now because Ray is here. He might as well tell his story by himself. Now, Ray, tell us a little bit about your journey, especially how you got started with life digital marketing. Yeah, sure. So I guess it was quite funny that, you know, when I was quite a, a young age, I was living in Western Sydney and I just, for some reason, had an entrepreneurial spirit in me. And it wasn't until later that I actually found out that my uh, grandpa used to run their own bike shop known as the Hooper Bikes back in Sydney back in the day. Um, so maybe that's where I got it from. Maybe it's genetics. But I remember, you know, when I was a young age, I would always play with, you know, the shop toys and stuff like that. But then from the age of seven, yeah, that's where I started my journey into, I guess, you know, selling things. And I was really passionate about the environment. So my first hobby slash, you know, business venture was selling uh, stickers for the Australian Koala Foundation. And funnily enough, we still support koalas to this day in that foundation. And hence, I love a bit of koalas behind me um, in terms of my space. Um, but yeah, it was from there that really the business kind of, you know, came to life, funnily enough, um, by mistake. So I started a few different ventures. I did a, you know, a cool kids magazine with my best uh, friend, neighbor, um, started doing that, started telling stories. And then by mistake, we needed to come up with a website. And so I was playing with something called Matt Mice, which was like a kids builder at the time. And so I had no idea how to create a website. I was like, what is this? You know, what have I got myself into? And I was just determined, you know, just to go in there and actually create a website. And so we did um, using the Matt Mice project and then there was something called FreeWebs at the time. And lo and behold, after that, you know, word gets around and someone's like, oh, Ray, can you, can you build this website or can you do this? And it's like, oh, yeah, totally. And when you're young and naive, you're like, um, yeah, I can do that for sure. Um, so I remember I, you know, had to create, I think it was Joomla first and before WordPress, but Joomla was the in thing at that point in time. So I learned how to create a Joomla website and then it progressed to WordPress. But honestly, I had no idea. I didn't go to school for that skill. I had to learn on YouTube tutorials, following blogs, pulling my hair out, 
um, and overpromising, but at the same time, I learned so much. And that's how my business by mistake really started was the fact that, you know, someone had asked for something, I was determined to learn. Um, and that's how kind of the life journey began. Fantastic. So it kind of dropped on your lap, just like the drop bears you were trying to save with the stickers, right? Yes. Funnily enough, I learned the other day that uh, drop bears, uh, I can't remember the technical name, but they actually did exist or some kind of bear that's similar to that um, mammal species. But yeah, it was back in the day. So there you go. So it might not be a myth after all. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Now you were selling these stickers. Were you selling them door to door? What what methodology were you utilizing to actually make most of these sales? Yeah, I was selling door to door. So again, I would just knock on random strangers and have no shame and just, you know, um plead to them, you know, to be able to help and raise money for the foundation. Um, and that, you know, progressed, I guess, in terms of confidence as well, because you can imagine knocking on someone's door, um, complete stranger, probably not <laughs> recommended by parents these days. Um, but, you know, knocking on someone's door and asking them to support something that, you know, they've never heard of before um, was a big ask. But you learn different people's traits and different behaviours and how to react in those situations. Some people, I think I remember, you know, are quite positive. They're like, oh, that's so sweet. Whereas others, you know, tell you out the door, um, that kind of message. So I think that's also given me the skill to, you know, in life and um, in business as well, is to really understand that there are barriers in terms of, you know, when you're selling something or when you're actually communicating with people. And it's about understanding what their needs are rather than just coming up to them and being like, hey, I've got some stickers for you. Let's save koalas, you know. You've got to try and understand them before you actually bring your sales pitch to life. So I think that was an important learning for me. Fantastic. I mean, obviously you you literally had your foot in the door while you were knocking and that then led you to your, you know, entrepreneurial journey. Now, is there any lessons that you would have taken from that period, especially, you know, that whole altruistic uh, endeavor of trying to work with the koalas and also, um, you know, just really getting people shut you down in, in in your face at that tender age what sort of um you know lessons did you then carry on to what you're doing in your business currently yeah i think the number one lesson is to never take it personally right um and never say no as a never um as well so like if someone says no that might just be the time that it is or it might be their circumstances and things do change um but also relationships are so important so i think what it's taught me like you know, like I said, you can't really go up to someone randomly and say, here's some stickers, buy me, buy me. Um, anyone in business, or, you know, whether you're selling a product or a service, it's about relationship building. So often, you know, in marketing, we like to call, um, it's like a pyramid and it's a sales funnel and we like to refer to that. But I like to consider marketing as almost like a love funnel because really what you're trying to do is, you know, get my attention, um, flirt a little, get that first kiss or get that date and, you know, really cement that relationship. Because at the end of the day, we're all human and we all connect based on those relationships rather than the transactional level. And it's that connection, particularly for small businesses, that's so important, right? Because if you think about it, the big corporates, they can't do that. They've got hundreds and hundreds of people, but, you know, they're a big brand. Their logo is their stance. They don't really have someone out there that they can identify with as a person, as an individual that says, hey, that's what the brand stands for and that's who it is. And that's the advantage that particularly, you know, small businesses um, often just don't take advantage of because, you know, whether they're fearful of the fact of putting themselves out there um, or, you know, they're camera shy it's really important to just take those little steps and to represent your brand because, that is how you get cut through um, with real people as well. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And just looking at you behind you, you know, everything about your brand is being represented there. You know, the koalas, the sustainability, and just how down to earth you are. So immediately, whoever can be on a meeting with you will definitely, um, you know, be able to tell, you know, what sort of a person you are and what sort of, um, you know, results they can sort of expect from you. Now, with, you know, you having worked with the koalas and everything else, you've also started incorporating uh, sustainability um you know within your business and for a lot of people that has just sort of become somewhat of a buzzword you know just based on what the climate um, you know is saying and whoever is the loudest um you know is getting that voice you know how do you incorporate sustainability in your business model and how do you actually help your clients do the same yeah, no, definitely. So at the end of the day, it's about being proactive rather than reactive. And so where people mistake is they go, oh, what can I, you know, take from what I'm already doing to say that I'm being sustainable in my business? That's the wrong approach. The right approach is to look at it as what's the impact that I'm actually having now and how can I make a difference? So, for example, we started to sign up to 1% for the planet a few years ago. And we encourage our clients to do the same. And what that means is we commit 1% of our revenue, so not just profit, but revenue, um, to environmental causes. So you can select from a whole range of causes. And the one that we selected was the It's Time Foundation, which is a fantastic program run by um, someone that won an Order of Australia medal. Um, and they started this program, which basically replaces fossil fuel generators for schools in remote and Pacific Islander communities so that they can actually have solar power, which is obviously more cleaner um, and renewable energy, which is important. But at the same time, because they're getting savings on their energy bills from not having to use those generators, they can actually produce school supplies. So we think that's an amazing program and again, we found them through 1% for the planet, which was incredible. And we continue to support that program to this day. And it's amazing the impact that that makes. And we often say to clients, you know, just because you're a small business doesn't mean you can not make a difference at the end of the day. So that's one of the key examples and an easy way for businesses is to demonstrate that. And you can also use that as a credibility piece because let's say if someone's choosing between business A and business B, and, you know, they do care about the environment and one of those is a 1% for the planet member, then that gives them a value point to go, hang on, actually, I'm going to go for that business that is a member because when I work with them, they're going to make a difference. So that's a key differentiator in terms of how you do business. But it doesn't just stop there. So, for example, with one of our clients, um, they sell... Um, artificial greenery which sounds odd for a sustainable business like us to connect with them so what we did with them was we said hey why can't some of these products be recycled or why can't we use recyclable materials so because of our partnership with them and it's gone beyond six years now we actually made them produce a line of product which is 100 percent recycled but also developed their kind of world first recycling program so that if you had an artificial green wall um, from designer plants, the client, then you would actually be able to recycle it as a world first. So again, that's putting our, our, you know, sustainability focus in action where it's like, you know what, yes, you can sign up to these organisations and donate money and support that, but also how can you make an impact in your business operations? So that's one good example. Another good example is one of our clients, um, you know, in the hosting space chooses to host with us because we offset their carbon footprint. So we partnered with a number of, um, I guess, uh, for example, the Green Web Foundation, as well as Carbon Neutral to basically estimate how much of a footprint a digital presence has on the internet. And so by doing that, again, we're making another impact. So we've already offset over 32 tonnes of carbon in the last two years of having that program. And that's an, you know, a difference that you know, other businesses wouldn't be able to make before um, or even collectively. So by having that program, small businesses can even make a difference. Um, but what I like about our clients is, yes, they do that, but then this client in particular, um, which is Queen of Snow Globes, they make these amazing snow globes. But what they thought about was actually, you know, how far does my product need to travel? Because that's a carbon footprint in itself. 
And also what packaging do I need to use? So by having these conversations and encouraging sustainability practices, not only can we make a difference in multiple ways, um, but it can also be really highly valuable for your business in the long term. And we know from research, particularly the younger generation, they more favour businesses that do care about the impact on the planet because, you know, um, we can't be blinded by the fact that climate change is real. And of course, we all need to play a part in making a difference at the end of the day. Fantastic. And it does look like you're working with some really, um, you know, ethical companies there and good on you for championing the cause uh, while everybody else is out there polluting the air and uh, <laughs> making it hard for us to breathe. Now, th there has to be a delicate balance there, Ray, you know, um, of, uh, you know, choosing the right kind of people you want to work with. How do you then balance that ethical barrier of choosing the right clients and making the decisions that may actually even affect your bottom line? Yeah, so for us, we started something called the Ethical Charter, which basically outlines who we work with and who we don't, and is really transparent in terms of how we work and the principles that we follow. And so every client that comes to us, whether it's a lead um, or an existing client wanting a new project, they have to agree to that ethical charter. So if they're in a business that's against the ethical charter, we will not do business with them and we make that clear. Um, and because of that, maybe I'm not <laughs> the richest person in the room, um, but so be it. At the end of the day, you've got to stick to your values um, and to do that. So I think that's really important as well. Fantastic. So most of this must have emanated from your sort of upbringing, um, you know, with with just how uh, you are now approaching business. So what, what sort of lessons have you learned from your upbringing and personal experiences that have actually shaped your uh, approach to business and entrepreneurship at this moment? Yeah, it's interesting. Like um, in terms of my journey, I've had a few different things happen in my lifetime. Like, for example, um, when I was young, my mother got hit by a, a car, tragically. Um, so she was crossing the road and got hit by a car. And at the time, we didn't think she was going to survive. So that's when I actually was growing up in Sydney. And that was quite a hard time, as I'm sure you can imagine, um, not knowing whether your mum was going to survive or not. So luckily, she did survive. Um, but it really forced me to mature early and to be more independent. So when I moved to Melbourne and my sister took care of me, um, bless her up until I was 18, it really forced me into that position of how do I fend for myself, you know? How do I look after my family but also fend for myself so that, you know, I can succeed in life or can do what I want to do. So I think that's really pushed the accelerator <laughs> um, in terms of that because, you know, when you're in that situation, you can either... Um, going to the point of, oh, my gosh, you know, life sucks and this is dreadful and, you know, I'm just going to stay here and try and do everything that I can do, you know, what's here, what's in front of me. Or you've got the other position where it's like, I'm going to take this as a, a blessing in disguise and how do I use this to make myself better but also to help other people. So I think I'm actually very grateful for everything in life and also what's happened. Um, obviously you wouldn't wish any day a family member to get hit by a car or anything like that. Um, but sometimes these events, which are really hard in your life can actually teach you a lot about things um, and make you appreciate life a lot more. So for me, I often laugh and say, you know, you only live once that YOLO principle, I'm sure you've heard of, um, <laughs> so, you know, if I'm jumping out of a helicopter in Switzerland, skydiving, that's a YOLO principle, right? So it's like make every day count. So as much as you can live life to the full and don't be afraid of challenges. Like, you know, on the weekend, I did my first half marathon to raise money for Dementia Australia. That was brutal um, and still recovering from that. But again, it's just, you know, going out there, having fun um, and living life to the full. I think that's so important. Fantastic. You know, some people, when they hear YOLO, they're just thinking, oh, party till the sun comes out. You know, <laughs> that's their definition of that. But you've really, uh, you know, 
come out of a lot more challenges um you know than 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 that meets the eye you've faced eviction you've faced financial difficulties uh while you're actually on your journey to pursue your goals and now you're telling us you were actually running yesterday just so you could help other um you know people that are, might be going through you know stuff that you might not be able to go through in your life what sort of valuable lessons did you actually learn from the experiences that you um you know went through because some people might think that you know the stories that we go through are literally designed to obliterate us when they're actually us being uh planted not being buried yeah i think it's it's funny because like we as humans, we're always comparing ourselves to others. And, you know, even as businesses, we're like, oh, what's that person doing? What's that? And we often hear the success stories, but not so much the failures that go beyond that. Like, you know, when I was young, I had no idea about cash flow. Um, so cash flow was my weakness. So I would have all these different ventures and not be able to, you know, pay the bills at the end of the day. And so I really had to learn about you know how to balance the books how to make sure that enough cash flow is coming through um so that i could pay the bills um and you know not be evicted at the end of the day so don't um get me wrong um where i am today i'm privileged but it's because i went through that journey of you know facing those difficulties where you you can't put um money on the table in terms of your rent and you're facing yeah that eviction notice to say you know what um things are getting real. And so you don't have many options to kind of go there. You kind of have to, yeah, either you go homeless or you you have to find a way out. And so I found a way out, um, you know, by actually uh, helping businesses market their product, which at the time would have been, I suppose, even more difficult because really when I think back now to what I am today, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, so much trust was involved with those businesses that I was able to help them and market their products. But little did they know I couldn't put, you know, food on the table or, you know, pay the rent at that time. Um, and so those really difficult challenges, I think we, you know, sometimes ignore or um, we forget that a lot of people are doing it tough. And particularly now, uh, I know some, you know, some businesses, uh, a friend of mine, runs an agency and, you know, they're having difficulties at the moment. And so it's like what they share on social media, it's like, oh, it's amazing. You know, it's fantastic. Everything's growing, but behind closed doors, um, you know, it's far from the truth and I'm not going to reveal who that is obviously, but I think it just makes us wonder that, you know, when we compare ourselves to others, um, it's really important to understand that everyone has a journey. Everyone has a story. Um, and so success, you know, is not a one way street. You, there's so many ways to achieve success and also to define it as well. Um, but if you don't go through those hard times, perhaps you don't appreciate it more of how important it is. And that's why I think that whole giving back has come to me because it's like, you know what, I wasn't in a great position then. Now I am. So now I'm in a position to give back. And I think, you know, if you give back um, as a visitor to this planet, then um, it, it's, it's worthwhile and it's meaningful as well. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I viscerally believe we're here to live, to learn and to contribute, you know, to live the best life we've got to live. We have to learn everything that we've got to learn, the good and the bad. So, you know, your life story, the lessons that you went through and everything along the way, um, we're just contributing for you to actually now have this testimony that you now have. So you went through all those tests so you could have this testimony. And so many people want to dodge, um, you know, the lessons and try and cut corners and everything else. But at the, you know, when you do that, you're literally changing not only yourself, but those that can actually then experience the gift of who you are becoming. Um, and so many people don't quite gather that. So whenever you're going through stuff, I usually just compare them to little accessories, you know, like accessories towards um, a good outfit, you know, um, it's not complete. You, Ray is not complete without his glasses. Ray is not complete without his story. So some people try and run away from that, but um, no, 
we're talking to you. You've shared stages, collaborated, and um, worked with, you know, industry tycoons like Kate Toon herself, um, you know, and you've, you know, started working with so many people. Now, how how does that make you feel as a person, Come having come from that and, you know, you now at the place where you are at, does that make you feel complete? Does it make you feel done or you you still have a lot more lined up? I think it just further motivates me. I, as a, I'm one of those people that likes to be um, busy, but in the sense of doing things, you know, that make a difference. So, like, I don't, it's funny because my partner will often want to just watch TV and that's okay. And I think they teach me the lesson of, yes, you've got to switch off sometimes, of course, um, which is a very important lesson as well. But, yeah, I think these um, opportunities just make me more motivated to go, you know what, how can I do better? So, for example, when I'm doing, you know, webinars to teach people how to use Google Analytics for, for example, I always, you know, change the different packs just to improve them each time. So I go back and go, you know what, how can I simplify this even more? How can I continually improve this so that the next experience is even better? Because I want to make it better each and every time. So I don't believe, you know, you just use the same pack or, um, kind of, you know, just recycle it all the time. You've got to make increments, you've got to improve and you've got to listen to audience and what they think as well. So that's really, yeah, key. Fantastic. So somebody's sitting at the edge of their seat right now, Ray, and they're, you know, wanting to find out more about what it is that they can do and collaborate with you. What would be the best way that, um, you know, people can um, get in touch with you? Yeah, you can search for us, LYF Solutions, um, on Google. Proof is in the pudding that we come up there. Um, or you can obviously go to lyfsolutions.com.au um, or follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, so you're welcome to see our inspirational posts um, to help uh, grow your business sustainably as well. Fantastic. Talking of inspirational posts, I think it was one of the posts that you put out that um, inspired me to to sort of get in touch for us to have this call. Now, what advice would you give to aspiring entrepreneurs who are looking to start their own business while also incorporating ethical practices and sustainability? Yeah, I'd say go for it um, and don't be afraid um, to be different in your approach because those really play out well within the marketplace but also with consumers. Um, you know, if you're willing to just persist and um, have an idea that's, you know, going to make a difference, then go all guns blazing um, into that because that's the best way of approach. And when you do fail, I would always see it as a learning opportunity. Funnily enough, when I started Life Solutions, it actually stood for limit your failure because when I was younger, I thought failure was a bad thing. But as I learned in my business journey and in life, um, it's actually not. So now I tell people, uh, lift your future would be the new name. <laughs> um, but that's, you know, what it used to um, stand for. So take those failures as an opportunity. And I think, you know, sometimes a failure can really get you in the, um, in a mood of like, oh, what, have I, what am I doing? Or you get that imposter syndrome as well. Um, just remember that with each failure, there is actually a learning um, and an opportunity as well. Fantastic. I like how you've just used the acronym LYF, Lift Your Future. And speaking of which, let's look ahead. What are your future goals and aspirations for uh, Lift Your Future Solutions? And how do you actually envision making a lasting impact in the digital marketing industry? Because there's no point in just getting started talking about sustainability and not really making a mark. Yeah, no, definitely. So one of the things that we decided to do was our green web hosting business, which I talked about before in terms of the offsetting of web hosting and emissions. Uh, we're rebranding that. So later this year, we'll come out with a, a new name, new branding um, to stand on its own two feet. Because what we found is um, if we want to grow that further, um, it's best to actually have it as a standalone uh, business rather than have it connected to our ethical digital marketing business because sometimes people perceive that as, oh, I'm just trying to sell you services. When in actual fact, we've done a lot of the hard yards to make sure our hosting business is reliable um, 
by even investing in a 24 seven support team. And that's not something people are, you know, used to when it comes to a, a working with a, a digital marketing firm, for example. So by having it as its own brand, it can stand out and actually achieve the vision that we want to achieve, which is 10,000 trees over the next three years to be planted. Now we've already planted 1300 um, through carbon neutral. And like I said, offset over 32 tons of carbon but our mission is, you know, to really get further than that. So the vision is 10,000 over the next three years um, and 200 tonnes of carbon um, as well. Um, and that's what we have our eyes on. And the new brand is really cheeky um, and creative. And of course, it has a koala element to it. Um, so we'll be excited to share more of that um, as time comes this year. Fantastic, man. I really, really would like to thank you for your time on the show today. That was amazing stuff. And obviously, uh, for those that are watching, that concludes our insightful conversation with Ray, the founder of Alive Solutions. It's no longer live. It's now branded Lift Your Future as of now. So they are an ethical uh, digital marketing firm. And you've heard Ray's journey from selling stickers to saving koalas and now running one of the most successful businesses that's centered around sustainability. And, um, you know, this story is truly inspiring. All right. So for those that are watching, I really, um, you know, hope you will take whatever you got from Ray's story and reach out to him so that you can connect and find out how you can actually also be doing have a business that's profitable and enjoyable and now sustainable. Now we're grateful to Ray for sharing his insights and wisdom with us today. And I actually wish you continued success, my man, because this endeavor um, really is going to take everything you've ever had because you know, you are working against, um, you know, what everybody else is, is fighting to, to, to put down out there. So good luck 